Intrinsic value is arguably the most important thing to know when it comes to investing. Because if you can't calculate the intrinsic value, then how do you know if you're getting a good deal for the stock? As Warren Buffett says, the critical investment factor is determining the intrinsic value of a business and paying a fair or bargain price, so that it brings us to the question, how do we calculate the intrinsic value of a stock? That is what this whole video is going to be dedicated to, a simple step-by-step -step guide on calculating the intrinsic value of a stock. Warren Buffett makes the definition of intrinsic value crystal clear. He said, intrinsic value is the discounted value of the cash that can be taken out of a business during its remaining life. So we look at the business, we determine how much cash it will generate over time, and then we discount these cash flows back to the present day. In order to do this calculation, we need three ingredients. One is the current cash flow, two is the cash flow growth rate, and three is the discount rate, in order to discount the cash flows back to the present day and determine our intrinsic value. The reason why Buffett specifically said cash flow instead of earnings, which is a more popular metric, is because earnings can be manipulated by the management team, but it's extremely hard to manipulate the actual physical cash flows that a business generates. Simply, cash flow is more reliable than earnings. It's pretty easy to find the cash flow in the modern day, thanks to the internet, and for this example, I'm going to use Apple stock. The website that we use to get these metrics is called Guru Focus. So the first thing to do is type Apple stock Guru Focus. Then what you want to do is go to the DCF section, discounted cash flow, and if you look here, it'll show us what the current cash flow is for Apple stock. Currently, the free cash flow is $5.57. Remember that figure, because we're going to be using it soon. But before we do, we need to determine what the growth rate is going to be for the cash flow in the future. Remember that Buffett said to calculate the intrinsic value, you need to discount the future cash flows of the business. In order to know the future cash flows, we need to know how much the current cash flow is going to grow by. So, for Apple, the example that we're using, the current cash flow is $5.57. But what would the growth rate be for the cash flow? One of the best ways for determining future growth rates is by looking at the growth rate in the past. Then you can extrapolate this into the future. However, you want to be conservative and make it somewhat lower as businesses grow faster at the beginning and then they start to slow down. To find Apple's past cash flow growth rate, just go to the exact same place that we are at before. Here is where we see the past cash flow growth rates. Don't worry about the one-year growth rate, it's better to focus on the longer-term ones. Over the past five years, Apple has had an 8% growth rate, and over the past 10 years, it's been 16.2%. If we look at the growth rate and earnings per share, it's around the same figures. So in the future, we can say that over the next five years, we might see an 8% growth rate, and the five years after, we might see around a 6% growth. Now we have two of the key ingredients that we need to put into our intrinsic value formula. We're going to open Excel spreadsheet calculator because it makes things so much easier. Here we have the Excel spreadsheet, which we'll use to calculate the intrinsic value. The first thing we need to do is put in our current cash flow. And for the Apple stock, that was $5.57. Next, we need to plug in our cash flow growth rate figures over here. So if you remember, for our first five years, we had 8% growth rates. And for the five years after, we had a 6% growth rate. So every year, you can see how much we expect the business to generate in cash. In 2022, if it grows by 8%, we'll get $6.02 in cash. Then if it keeps growing by 8%, it'll be $6.50, $7.02, $7.58, and so on for 10 years. We'll get all of this in terms of cash, but on the 10th year, we also get another big lump of cash, and that's when we sell the stock if we choose to. This is called the terminal value, and it's the last bit of cash flow that we need to calculate. In order to work out the amounts that we'll get for selling, we simply find the cash flow that it's generating when we sell in the 10th year and we times it by a multiple. I've decided to use the multiple of 20 because it's lower and more conservative than Apple's current cash flow multiple of 26.9. Now we have all the cash flows we expect to get for Apple across a long-term period of 10 years. The final ingredient we need for the calculator is the discount rate that we can expect to use. Once we have the discount rate, we can determine the intrinsic value. The discount rate is the rate in which we use to discount the cash flows back to the present day. Essentially, it's the expected return that you think is reasonable to get on a stock. The discount rate that you can use depends on the market. If the market is pricey and you want a 20% return, well then you'd find it very hard to get on a stock at the price you want. If the market's cheap, however, then there'll be quite a few stocks that have prices with a discount rate of 20%. In today's market, and generally speaking, I like to use a discount rate of around 10%, which is almost double than what the market return is priced in at, so 10% is more than reasonable. Now let's plug in a 10%. As you can see here, based on the current growth rates and a discount rate of 10%, 
it shows up the present value of Apple stock is around the $125 mark. But if we look at Apple's price today, it's selling for about $150. Apple stock is slightly overvalued at this rate after its high growth in price over the past couple of years. But you can argue that Warren Buffett bought big into Apple stock and isn't Buffett someone who only buys stock when it's undervalued? Well, yes, that's true. But he bought all of his Apple stock between 2016 and 2018, back when the price was $25 to $50, significantly undervalued compared to the intrinsic value of the price today. Currently, the price is three to six times higher than the price Buffett paid. This gives us a good idea as to why he hasn't bought any more. An important thing that I need to point out is, when you make these intrinsic value calculations, avoid precision thinking. You shouldn't look for a precise figure on the exact value of the stock. You should be using your calculations to get an idea for what the stock is worth. As Warren Buffett says, as our definition suggests, intrinsic value is an estimate rather than a precise figure it's better to be approximately right than precisely wrong. What you should do is make a habit of calculating the intrinsic value of each stock that you analyze. If you do this for a while, you'll start getting a very good feel for the market, and you'll become way more skilled at identifying the stocks that are undervalued. Because of course the goal is to find the stocks that are priced well under their intrinsic value. You should always remember that the intrinsic value is just a quantitative measure, and this should not exclude you from doing the other forms of analysis on a stock. You also need to make sure that you understand the business model in depth, that the stock has a great set of managers, and that the stock business model is of high quality, a model that will be thriving in 5, 10, and 20 years' time. These qualitative measures are equally important as the quantitative. Some people believe that calculating the intrinsic value of a stock is incredibly complicated, but if you follow the Warren Buffett method, it's simple. Find the current cash flow of the business, then determine the growth rate for the cash flow for 10 years. Work out the multiple that you think you can sell it for your terminal value in 10 years' time. And lastly, you need to work out the discount rates for your cash flows to discount them back to the present day. Easy. Thanks for watching.